and uh, <coughs> we will continue our discussion about uh, introduction to JASP uh, and uh, recap of uh, basic statistical concepts. So uh, we have uh, covered a discussion about nominal variables. Uh, we know how we can uh, use JASP uh, for uh, computation of mode, uh, frequency table and description uh, by pie chart. And uh, we can go uh, to uh, uh, ordinal variables. For ordinal variables, of course, uh, we can apply the same tools as uh, for nominal variables. So it means uh, mode, frequency table, pie chart, bar chart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but usually, instead of mode, uh, we are applying for ordinal variables median. Uh, this is the value in the middle. If I rank the values from the lowest to the highest uh, values. And uh, as possible chart for ordinal variables uh, uh, that can be applied, uh, we can use box plot, which is using uh, box uh, for uh, median inside, upper and lower quartile as the edges. And uh, uh, there are also uh, something that is called viscous uh, in this box plot. We will show uh, this uh, in, once again, practical example through CHESP. So once again, I would go into CHESP uh, first of all, I will close this previous dialog uh, uh, to have a free window here on the left. And I would once again ask for descriptives. So uh, now I would only need uh, to use uh, some ordinary variable in my data set. And there are no more options uh, than the city size, which is coded as one. So it means uh, some small villages up to four, the biggest cities. Uh, so there are four categories. Uh, oh, sorry, Professor, do you share your screen? Or right, sorry, sorry, thanks a lot. Uh, so um, once again, sharing, uh, yeah, that's my mistake. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, median and box plot. And now uh, we are once again uh, into chess and we are using variable, uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth one, which is called citizens. Uh, and uh, code one, once again, small villages up to code four, uh, some uh, bigger cities. Uh, so four categories covered here. And we would like to analyze this city size uh, variable. So uh, I would uh, call this procedure descriptive statistics for variable, Excuse me, can I interrupt you? Yeah, of course. Uh, there is Anna Ohrabkova waiting. She had to leave the meeting and now she cannot go back. Can you please do it somehow that she can be in the course now? Try to manage it. Yeah, there are two more people, but there is no announcement. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. It's functioning currently. Yeah, oh, it seems. Okay. So once again, uh, let's go uh, into sharing. So uh, descriptive statistics uh, for variable uh, city size. And uh, we would, uh, as the first step, uh, prepare our data analysis. So let's go into statistics and let's score for median. Maybe we can ask also for mode, minimum, maximum. We would uh, exclude standard deviation. And from plots, we can ask uh, uh, maybe uh, for box plot. Here it is. And maybe we can also ask for frequency table. So the variable, the six one city size, we will move it uh, to the uh, right window. And now, here we have our results. So we can uh, make uh, the window with outputs bigger by these uh, small triangles uh, in the middle. Uh, so um, we will use this uh, uh, simple tool. So for city size, once again, eight missing values. Uh, this, uh, there are some strange uh, blank uh, rows in my data. Median is three as well as mode is three. Once again, coding uh, for the city size was one small villages, I guess it was up to uh, 2,000 inhabitants. Uh, uh, code two, uh, two to 5,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, uh, code three, up to 50,000 uh, inhabitants. And the four uh, stands uh, for uh, cities with more than 50,000 inhabitants. So it means uh, that uh, code three 
is median and mode. So it means that cities uh, in which there is more than 5,000 and less than 50,000 of people uh, are uh, the most frequent. We can see it here directly from frequency table. 110 flats are in this category. And this is also median. So if I rank all the flats uh, according uh, to the city size in my data file, so in the middle, if I sum up here by the cumulative person, I can go to this cumulative person column. And this is the first row in which I uh, exceed 50% level. So this is the median. Here it is written directly. Median is the third category of city size. Once again, cities with more than five and less than 50,000 of people. So this is basic description, median and more. In frequency table, uh, we can also uh, read uh, that there are 18 flats in small villages, 87 uh, in uh, some bigger villages, uh, two to 5,110 uh, in the middle cities, and in big cities, 48 flats. Once again, eight missing values as there is something strange in my data file and eight uh, blank uh, rows are uploaded. And in total, 271 flats here are available. So here is box plot. And here you can see a uh, classical box, which is basic for the name box plot. So here, this is the first quartile, so it means one quarter of all flights are in the cities that are in category two or category one. So this is the first quartile. Here, this is uh, quite a uh, uh, solid line, and it means this is upper quartile as well as median. Sometimes median can be somewhere inside the box, sometimes it can be in the upper part or lower part uh, of the box. So here the median and also upper quartile, it means three quarters of flats are in the category of three or lower. We can read it directly from frequency table that not only 75 three quarters, but also nearly 82% of all flights are in category three or lower. And logic of this box plot is also usually accompanied by these so-called whiskers. And uh, the length of these whiskers classically is one and a half of this distance. And this distance between lower quartile and upper quartile is called interquartile range. So you take this interquartile range and uh, multiply it by one and a half and make this whisker. And points that are outside, there is no point outside uh, uh, of these whiskers here uh, for this variable, but points that are outside of these uh, whiskers are usually called extreme values or outliers. So there are no outliers, no extreme values for this value set size. We will apply once again box plot uh, uh, for our data in a few minutes uh, for another variable, which would be cardinal, and maybe we will see some extreme values uh, for uh, this uh, cardinal variable. So this is brief description of descriptive statistics for ordinal variables, and now we can go into cardinal variables. So, of course, you can apply all tools for normal and ordinal variables, but uh, we will not uh, recap these. But instead of mode, instead of median, we usually apply mean for cardinal variables. Mean, I guess you know it from nursery school, uh, is only the sum of all values divided by the number of these values. This is classical descriptive statistics for cardinal variables. For description of cardinal variables, we can use box plot, but uh, the best chart for cardinal variables is maybe histogram, uh, which uh, shows your data by so-called distribution curve. And for cardinal variables, instead of frequency table, by which you can see how frequent are different options of uh, values, we usually apply some measurements of variance, mostly variance itself, or sometimes the square root of variance, which is called standard deviation. And sometimes we also apply for cardinal variables, skewness and kurtosis, but we will not uh, discuss uh, these uh, in detail. Okay, 
So let's go to our data file. Uh, so uh, we try to describe a variable new uh, as nominal variable. We try to describe city size as ordinal variable. And as cardinal variable, as uh, we will be using this variable uh, many times, uh, uh, I would uh, take uh, the variable price and maybe then also size. It means price of the flat and size of the flat uh, in our data file. So, first of all, I would uh, take uh, price uh, of the flat. Uh, so, I will close this dialog, open once new dialog for descriptives, and I would prepare descriptive statistics for prices of flats. So here it is. So before we start, uh, we need to define properties for our analysis. So in statistics, it seems quite nice that we would compute mean, standard deviation. You can take also variance, but usually we use standard deviation. It means square to variance, minimum, maximum. Uh, and if you like, you can also uh, check skewness and kurtosis, but we will not discuss these. So that's statistics. Frequency table uh, for cardinal variables is not useful. So I would not check frequency tables here. And from plots, uh, I guess uh, that uh, the best one would be distribution plot. And maybe we can also uh, use box plot. So these are definitions of our plots. And I would take price as the variable in which we are interested in. And you can see very easily uh, results uh, for prices of flats. So uh, these are data approximately 10 years old uh, from one Czech region. So these are real data uh, about prices uh, of flats and other uh, characteristics of these flats. Uh, and uh, means uh, that these values that are computed here are all in Czech crowns. So the mean or average uh, for these prices uh, was approximately uh, 900,000, uh, so that's the average. Standard deviation, it means uh, variation for individual prices was approximately one half of the mean. Uh, minimum price was approximately uh, <coughs> 240,000 uh, uh, and the biggest value uh, was approximately 3 million. Uh, so uh, these are basic descriptive statistics for my data. Here we can see the distribution plot. Uh, so you can see there is quite a lot of uh, flats with quite small price. There are also some flats with quite big price here in my data set. And according to box plot, you can see that these values approximately above uh, 1.7 million check rounds are as small points outside of this upper whisker. So it means uh, uh, this chart is saying, okay, these are some extremes in my data and you should maybe uh, try to think about uh, uh, exclusion of these big prices from your data set for further analytical purposes. So this is about prices by charts and by descriptive statistics. We can try also to take sizes of flats uh, into this one analysis. So just directly recompute your results. So basic descriptive statistics are covered in the same table. So you can read uh, that for size, the mean uh, or average uh, size for the flat is uh, 66 uh, square meters. Uh, yeah, Laja is raising hand. Yeah, I just want to clarify on the missing values because they are the ones, the empty rows that you show during explanation of yeah. the missing values. So it takes uh, the empty rows by default. So those are the eight missing values we have there because of some reason. These eight values are included in the computation? Yeah, yeah, those are the eight that we are seeing in missing values somehow. Uh, into which computation they are included? Uh, I just want to like say that uh, you said there are some strange missing values. So those are the ones that are like empty blanks we have in the the row two hundred sixty four. Yeah, uh, until these places are included. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to make clarification about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're Thank right. you. 
So uh, once again, uh, so uh, here we have uh, the average uh, uh, 66 square meters, uh, standard deviation is approximately 30 square meters uh, minimum. So it means uh, uh, the smallest flat uh, has 18 square meters, but maximum is quite strange, uh, 439 square meters. So it is uh, quite big flat, uh, we can say, uh, for the first inside. And it seems strange uh, for the first inside into my data. So here is distribution plot. So you can see these are classical flats, uh, maximum 200 uh, square meters, but this one is the big one uh, as was announced here by maximum. And the last one tool, uh, so it means uh, uh, this chart uh, for uh, uh, size of flats, uh, box plot says, okay, there is one strange flat. Uh, I guess that the real value is uh, 400 uh, uh, and uh, uh, 39 square meters. If you like, uh, at least uh, to identify uh, this plot, uh, I guess uh, that there is an option uh, through box plot, which is called label outliers. And if you click into this label outliers, uh, uh, there will be a description for all these points and it means 155 means that if I go back into my data matrix and I will find uh, the row uh, 155, this is the extraordinary big flat with 439 square meters. Uh, before we go further uh, and uh, we will recap basic concepts of uh, uh, statistical data analysis, uh, so it means correlations and t-tests. Uh, uh, maybe the question is uh, if we should include such strange case into our data analysis uh, for the next time or if we should think about possible omission of this uh, data point. So what's your opinion? I think that it may depend on um, the further analysis on the further procedures we are going to uh, execute because for some of procedures uh, such outliers can significantly uh, alter the result mm -hmm. and for other procedures uh, such outliers will have only a uh, minor influence and will not uh, significantly threaten our data. Okay, uh, you are maybe right. Uh, some other opinions about this extreme in my data. Okay, so everybody agree with Daniel. Uh, so uh, I would go back uh, and uh, uh, I would like only uh, to ask you uh, if you can remember about uh, this extreme in my data. Uh, so I would once again uh, start sharing uh, and uh, we will discuss about uh, this strange case uh, also uh, for future regression analysis in my data. Uh, uh, we will discuss about it graphically and also by some substantive computations. So uh, this is uh, the first brief insight uh, uh, into descriptive statistics and first insight into CHESP capabilities. So I guess uh, that if you are familiar with SPSS, uh, you will find nearly all necessary options uh, uh, here also in CHESP uh, for basic descriptive statistics only. And according to my opinion, it's quite nice that all these procedures are covered uh, in one big uh, dialogue, which is called descriptives. So uh, we know Neil everything about this dialogue. And now uh, short excursus about data transformations. Uh, so we will learn briefly how we can change our data. So it means uh, these individual variables directly or indirectly in JASP. So, uh, there are two options uh, and uh, basic options uh, are described uh, in a file which is called data transformation JASP. Uh, I will open this file and uh, uh, you have uh, this uh, file also available uh, through SIS. So I will, um, here is only a mess typo as I can see. Uh, so I will only make it bigger and two basic possibilities uh, uh, for uh, transformations in JASP are flowing. First one is 
that if you go directly into chess, for example, here we have CSV file, and if I double click into this data file, into this data matrix, JASP will open software for which it is possible to edit such a data file. So for example, here for CSV, I would expect that in my computer, uh, JASP would open Excel, and uh, uh, by uh, Microsoft Excel, I can edit data, I can save the data, and once again, uh, uh, immediately, I save the data in Excel, automatically they are updated in JASP. So I can add some columns, uh, change uh, recording, et cetera, et cetera. So that's possibility uh, to go from CSV directly into Microsoft Excel. If your data file behind uh, uh, this data matrix is from SPSS, it means extension SAV, and I would double click and I have the license of SPSS on my computer, SPSS automatically will open, I can change my data, save my data, and immediately it will be updated in chess. So this is direct, uh, indirect uh, way of data management in chess to use other uh, software packages uh, for uh, data management. Uh, but we will show uh, the possibility uh, which is included directly into chess and it is uh, <coughs> performed through blue symbol of plus, which is uh, uh, here, excuse, uh, excuse me, not blue, but uh, 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 it is black one, blue is uh, uh, for adding procedures. So here on the right hand corner of data matrix, there is a black symbol of plus, and you can see that automatically a description here is add computed column. So it seems that this procedure uh, will give you computation capabilities, but you will see it can compute. So it means procedure that you are familiar with uh, uh, from SPSS environment, but it can also somehow indirectly record your data. So I will show these options. So first of all, we will show brief computation. So if you click here into this black plus, so first of all, you need to assign name for the new column for your data for computation. So for example, I would decide uh, that I would be computing prices, not in check crowns, but maybe in thousands. So I would like to take gradual price and divide uh, it by 1000. So the new name of the variable would be price, in thousand, so I would call it price underline thousand. Then you can use this icon uh, with uh, hand, uh, so it is inside uh, uh, directly uh, chess uh, procedures uh, that are prepared for you. And then you need to define the scale. Your new variable can be scale, ordinal, or nominal, so it means some numbers will be included, or it can be also text variable. So for price in thousands, I would uh, define scale, and then you can create into uh, create column. So if you click here and wait maybe uh, for a minute, yeah, now it is prepared. So you can hear through this dialog, prefer the definition of this new variable. You can see it is called price underlined th as price in thousands. And there is also big F with small letter x so it means this is some function of previously defined variables this is small symbol for functions uh, uh, it means for some computations in chess and i would like to take price so i would take here price by clicking uh, into this big window and i would like to divide it by 1000 so i would use this icon for division and then type 1000. If I like to perform the computation, so it means instead of uh, uh, 800 thousands here, uh, to compute 800 here, I need to click here, uh, just below this uh, dial for computation, compute column. Then just uh, will compute, and here are results. Instead of 800 thousands, 800. Means to, uh, instead of uh, 60, uh, uh, six uh, 
150,650, etc., etc. It seems it is correctly computed. So this is internal computation machine uh, in uh, chess. And if I like to save my data, I need uh, to save my data in chess format. So this is the first possibility. Second possibility uh, uh, is uh, to use computation, but also recording using our commands. So there is also uh, by clicking here into this black class machine, which is uh, uh, taken directly from our command language. So I can click here into R and I would, for example, for simplicity, uh, like uh, to prepare variable which will distinguish uh, big flats and small flats. So for the variable of size, I would like to differentiate flats uh, uh, small than 100 square meters. And uh, the next uh, category would be flats with 100 square meters and more. So I would call this variable as big. Uh, uh, and if I click into R, I need to define scale, ordinal or nominal. This variable could be maybe nominal, but we can also uh, leave the scale, doesn't matter. And if you click here, you will get a command syntax window from R. So here it is. Here is some brief description in this document, how we can handle uh, such recording procedures and uh, the easiest uh, dialog uh, and uh, syntax command here uh, for recording is if else for one condition or if else more times if you are preparing some uh, combined uh, uh, recording into more than one category. Uh, so we will show only this simple if else condition. So we will type if else then in the bracket you need to type uh, your variable so it means we will be using size and uh, we will uh, say if the size is more than 99 square meters use code one and if it is small use code zero so i will take this command for simplicity and uh, type it here so if else my variable is size but be careful you must distinguish in chess small and big letters as chess is using R and R program is case sensitive. So if size is in big letters, I must type size in big letters. And I would type if size is more than 99. So if else bracket size is big letters more than 99, use code one. In other cases, use zero. And it means that here, chess will create new one variable, which is called big, with codes one and zero. So for example, for the first flat, it should be zero. For the next one, it should be zero, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe uh, we will find also some flats uh, uh, with code one. Click into compute column. And here you can see zero, 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 blah, blah, blah. And I would like uh, to find, for example, here, on the row number 54, the flat is 109 square meters, and it is coded as one. So it seems it is correct uh, definition of the new variable. So I will close once again uh, the file about data transformations. Uh, and uh, these are basic, I hope, simple data transformation that can be performed uh, in uh, JASP. Uh, uh, here are some examples for recording uh, too many categories, uh, create categorical variable from cardinal, that's what we are preparing, uh, or reverse order of categories, uh, uh, for example, for left right scale, and computation age from year of birth, uh, reversal of categories can be also uh, made by computation. So basic procedures such as recording and computation can be made also internally in chess or if you double click into chess data file you can go outside uh, to the applications such as microsoft excel or spss and you can change data in these applications and after saving you can analyze these change data 
So these are options uh, for data recording, and this is the end of our excursus uh, into uh, data management is chess. Uh, and then any questions uh, related uh, to these procedures? Okay, so uh, no questions. Will, will you show us later how to regroup into different, uh, more than one category of a variable? Uh, I would like uh, to say there is an example in this Microsoft Word document. So if you can follow these instructions, it would be easy for you, I guess. Okay. So you will repeatedly use the phrase if else uh, as it is uh, written in the document. Okay? Yeah? yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. So I would once again start sharing. And uh, uh, now we would go into brief recap uh, of uh, standardized normal distribution. It means well-known distribution that is applied for many statistical uh, computations. Uh, so we will be using uh, the basic knowledge about these distributions many times uh, in this course. So that's why we are uh, going back. So if we are discussing about standardized normal distribution, uh, we should know that this distribution is following mean at zero and standard deviation and also the variance is equal to one. So usually in statistical books, uh, you can find only for a simple description N01 stands for this standardized normal distribution. N stands for normal. Zero as the first part in the bracket stands for mean and one here stands for variance and also standard deviation as the square root from one is also one. So that's uh, uh, some basic description of standard normal distribution by descriptive statistics, mean zero, variance or standard deviation one. And here are basic uh, properties of this standardized normal distribution. So here in the middle, there is a mean, there is also the median, and there is also the mode. So value in the middle, the average, and also the most frequent value is here at zero. If you take the range plus one and minus one, so these spaces here cover approximately one third, more precisely 34.1% of all values under this distribution. So plus one and minus one range covers approximately 68% of all values that can be uh, normally distributed. We can also use maybe a slightly more simple uh, presentation that this is approximately two thirds of all values are quite close to the average, not more far than only one standard deviation. So this is the range minus one and plus one. If you take a more <coughs> and a bigger range, so you will take one more standard deviation to minus or to plus, you would get approximately 14% here and here. So the space here and the space here is approximately 14%. And if you sum up previously 68 plus 27, you are covering approximately 95% of all values. So it means that only 5% of all values lies outside the range minus two and plus two or minus two standard deviations plus two standard deviations. And you know from your previous statistical studies that usually this uh, uh, well-known property of standardized normal distribution, uh, we are applying uh, for computation of confidence intervals, as mostly we are computing 95% confidence intervals based on this logic. You would take mean or average, and you would take two times standard deviation. And also this logic is usually implemented into uh, statistical testing. So it means that if you are performing a statistical test, you are usually trying to find whether your test criteria is in this 
area outside 95% or in this area. And if it is uh, true, so you would reject null hypothesis. If your test criteria is here inside the range, uh, which is covered by 95%, you would not reject null hypothesis. Uh, that's only a brief recap of statistical testing concept. So that's standardized normal distribution. So here is another picture uh, of the uh, same phenomenon. Uh, and uh, this is only slightly more precise. So not precisely minus two, but precise value is minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. But for our course, uh, value approximately two is enough to remember. So these are properties of standardized normal distribution. Uh, only uh, for your insight, if you would like to play this normal distribution in JASP, uh, uh, in uh, the last two versions, uh, uh, there is quite nice tool, uh, which is uh, uh, called uh, distributions, I guess. Uh, yeah, here it is. So if you click here into distributions, uh, and you would click here into normal distribution, uh, so you can play a game uh, with, uh, uh, for example, standardized normal distribution. So here is, for example, the curve of standardized normal distribution, zero and one distributed. Here it is described zero, one. And you can, uh, if you like, uh, for example, to compute probability uh, from minus uh, two up to plus two, uh, uh, JASP uh, uh, quite nicely uh, will compute it for you and graphically show uh, this description. So 95% of all values approximately in the range from minus two till plus two. If you like the range uh, such as minus one up to plus one, so it should be about uh, two thirds of all values. So now it will be briefly computed and you can see 68% is included here. So this is a density uh, option uh, uh, for normal distribution uh, through uh, edit uh, procedure distributions in JASP uh, in last two versions in JASP. So that's quite nice tool if you like to know more about distributions. So here it is. And now uh, we would go briefly to recap of data analytical procedures. Uh, so uh, we will briefly recap uh, uh, some basics about uh, procedures that can be applied for real data analysis. So we would not only describe my data, but we will also uh, add more variables into data analysis and we will try to find relationships or differences. First of all, uh, and uh, here uh, on the slide number 15, uh, you can see basic uh, tools we can apply in data analysis. Uh, we can distinguish three basic procedures, uh, but we will not uh, cover the third one option, so we will distinguish only two basic procedures. Mm -hmm. And first one type of procedures in data analysis, try to find some differences differences for means, differences for medians, differences for proportions, or other statistical uh, <coughs> descriptive statistics. Mm -hmm. And usually we are trying to find differences for more uh, uh, groups, at least two, and usually for more than two groups. So that's one analytical goal, finding of differences. If you have two or more variables, you can also try to find relationships for these variables, for two or more variables once again. And we will start our recap uh, uh, with comparison of groups. So it means this first task, we will be finding for differences of means, medians, proportions in two or more groups. And for these uh, occasions, uh, we are usually applying uh, so-called t-tests and uh, for more groups, analysis of variance. So we will cover only t-test and practical example, but analysis of variance can be also made uh, uh, through uh, JASP. So here is only uh, for a simple analytical scheme uh, of computation of differences. So if you are comparing two groups and you are comparing means for cardinal variables, you are applying two independent samples t-test. If you are comparing more than two groups, 
comparing their means for cutting variables, you are performing analysis of variance. If you are computing differences for ordinary variables, this uh, green uh, <coughs> uh, part of uh, this dialogue, so for two groups, you are using man witness test and you are comparing medians. For more than two groups, you are usually performing crucial volis test, uh, which is a classical analogy for analysis of variance for ordinal variables. So this is basic scheme according number of groups and according uh, to the level of my variable for which I am comparing uh, some descriptive statistics. And now we will briefly recap uh, t-test uh, uh, for two independent groups. So if we would go into JASP, uh, we would uh, compute it by t-test, classical and two independent samples t-test. And uh, for simplicity, uh, we would uh, take uh, from my data, uh, prices uh, of flats uh, and uh, I would uh, try to compute, for example, uh, comparison of uh, mean uh, of uh, prices of flats uh, uh, versus uh, uh, the flat is, uh, uh, is uh, for example, uh, new or not. So prices versus new or not uh, would be my data analysis. So uh, this will be uh, the variable for which I will be computing and comparing means and new will be a variable uh, which will sort my data into two categories. So this is uh, data analysis and if you would like to perform it, so t-tests, classical part, not Bayesian, and the first one procedure, independent samples t-test. So if you click here, the dialogue is very, very uh, similar to SPSS dialogue for t-test. So here it is expected that you will take at least one variable for which you will be comparing means. Once again, we have two groups, cardinal variables, so we will be computing t-test. So here is the price. And we can take the variable new and we can distinguish uh, the prices for new and old flats. For uh, maybe bigger inside, I would ask also for location parameter and its confidence interval. And I would also ask for uh, effect size, uh, especially for so-called Cohen's D. Uh, so uh, I would add this recap, uh, uh, also uh, this confidence interval and this Cohen's D discussion. Before we start uh, to read results, uh, maybe uh, we should go back into your previous knowledge about t-test. And maybe uh, if you remember SPSS environment and t-test handling, uh, you know uh, in SPSS uh, that output for t-test was table with two rows. Uh, can anybody uh, remind me what were description of two rows for t-test in SPSS environment? What were these uh, two versions of t-test implemented in SPSS? Uh, I think that the equal vari variance is assumed and not, not assumed. Yeah, yeah, you are definitely right. So once again, short screen. Uh, and here, if you can see our preliminary results, there are no two rows. There is only one row and there is some note which says students t-test is applied. But maybe you don't know what is students t-test. So maybe we should discuss about these equal, unequal variances. If we would like to recognize an SPSS environment, whether to read the first or second row, it means uh, equal or unequal variances, uh, SPSS would offer at the beginning of the table for t-test, also two rows that are called Levenas test uh, about equality of variances. Here, it is not offered by default, but if you like, and you should uh, use this uh, uh, before you perform other procedures, you need to ask for this test. So if you go down into the dialog for two independent samples t-test for assumption checks, so left uh, uh, down corner, there is checkbox for equality of variances. So I would check this option 
and I would treat the results for so-called Leibniz test. So here is the evaluation of Leibniz test. And you can see that uh, for uh, our F value and one degrees of freedom, the P value here is 0 0.310. So it means that the P value here is quite big one. So what is our conclusion? Our variance is the same, maybe, or we should perform some test uh, for unequal variances. What should be our result? Can anybody remind me the result of uh, the evaluation of Leibniz test? Um, if it is uh, lower than 0 0.05, we should, in SPSS, we should read the second row. Um, so if here. this peak value is not smaller than 0 0.05, maybe the variances are the same, yeah? Yes. Okay. So now we should add uh, some more uh, information about two versions of t-test. Uh, once again, if you would go back uh, into your knowledge about SPSS environment, the first row uh, was called equal variances assumed. Uh, the second one, equal variances not assumed. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, uh, somebody right uh, that you have flex, uh, but currently it is okay or not? Let me know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So thanks a lot uh, for feedback. And there was maybe some instability in internet connection. So now it seems it works. So I would go back. So once again, uh, equal and unequal variances assumed, uh, and these tests uh, usually are called as student test for equal variances and for not equal variances, first test. So here in the chest, you must, first of all, apply equality variances of test, and then according to this result, decide whether you would like to use student, equal variances, non-equal variances, first test. So for us, as p-value is quite big one, student test seems okay. Okay, so this is t-test. And uh, here we can see the t-value, degrees of freedom, and the evaluation of p-value. As this p-value is quite small, can anybody uh, say me what would be conclusion about average prices of new and old flats? Can be the same or not? What would be conclusion? I would maybe add the descriptive statistic as well uh, for maybe better understanding of our results. So we have flats that are old with average price approximately uh, 884,000 uh, and uh, for new flats the average price uh, was more than one and a half million. So what can be conclusion from this p-value which is quite small one. This means uh, 90. Uh, uh, multiplied by 10 uh, over minus 6. So it means 0 0.00050 and sec, uh, sixth place uh, uh, after decimal place is 900. Uh, so it is very, very small value. What could be our conclusion here? Since P here is uh, less than uh, zero zero five, uh, it is possible to anticipate that uh, the price is different, and this is statistically okay. so, yeah. valid. So statistically, uh, we can conclude that it seems there is some difference uh, as p value is quite low one. Not only statistical significance, but also substantive significance. If you can see these averages. So the average for new prices is approximately two times higher. And also we can evaluate it uh, uh, by so-called Cohen's D. Cohen's D uh, is uh, the measurement of substantive significance. We call it usually effect size. And it is computed very easily. You take the first mean and the second mean, subtract uh, these two means, 
and divided by standard deviation. So we should compute uh, uh, pooled, uh, so it, mean, it means average standard deviation from these two standard deviation. And the difference for this means is 1.9 times standard deviation of this variable. And once again, uh, or if you are not familiar with Cohen's D, I would like to recommend that Cohen's uh, recommended uh, that uh, values approximately up to uh, 0 0.2 or up to minus 0 0.2 are small differences. 0 0.5 and approximately close values as uh, middle uh, differences and 0 0.8 and close values as big differences. So here is very, very huge difference according to this Cohen's D, which is standardized uh, FX size, which is often applied uh, to comparison of two groups. So my conclusion here is statistically uh, proven uh, difference and substantively big difference for average prices uh, for flats uh, that are new one and that are old one. So it is brief recap of independent samples t-test and only uh, I would like also to recap that not only p-value and statistical testing is included here, but if we ask for location parameter and confidence interval, uh, CHESP as well as for example SPSS can compute for you also confidence interval for mean difference. So here's the computation. And it says that if you compare the averages of new flats and old flats, so it means our two groups, it can be maybe nearly 1.13 million check rounds, or in minimum, it can be approximately 443,000. So it seems that the difference is huge, and this is the estimation of confidence interval for this difference. So that's independent uh, samples t-test recap and not only test but also Cohen's D and confidence interval as an alternative to statistical testing. So that's it and uh, last one uh, what we would uh, cover uh, in this short recap uh, is discussion about relationships. So if we are trying to find relationships uh, for variables we are mostly performing contingency table analysis and we are uh, using also so-called correlation analysis. Here is once again the scheme uh, which is divided by the type of variables. So if you have cardinal variables, we are usually performing Pearson's correlation. If you have ordinal variables, we are applying Spearman's or Kendall's uh, coefficient uh, which is based on rankings. And if you have uh, two or at least one nominal variable, we are applying contingency tables and we are computing contingency coefficients and the most common is so-called Kramer's D. We will not cover uh, contingency tables in this course, uh, so that's why we will be mainly interested in correlations and mainly uh, in Pearson's correlation. So uh, that's why uh, we will show as the last procedure today, uh, procedure uh, for correlation and uh, uh, we will perform correlation for two cardinal variables. So we will be using uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient. So I would go once again into just environment. And uh, before we start to compute anything, uh, maybe we can briefly discuss about our results. So I would propose that we would compute a relationship, it means correlation coefficient for the price of the flat and for the size of the flat. So before we start, I would like to ask you for some expectation. So what do you expect? Would be price and size related? Would be this relationship positive or negative? Would be this relationship strong or weak? So if somebody can help me uh, with answers to these questions about relationship of price and size of the flat, uh, I would be happy. Bigger size, bigger price. Okay, so positive relationship you expect and strong or weak? Uh, very strong. Strong. Strong? Okay, so that's our expectation. And maybe 
uh, we can uh, start the computation who would be the best at estimation of this correlation coefficient. So if you can try uh, to say some figures, uh, what is expected value of correlation, it would be nice. So maybe uh, some three people uh, can try. Or you can uh, type it into the chat uh, if you don't like to speak. So what is expected value of the correlation according to your opinion for prices and sizes of flats? 1.7, for example. 1.7 on Chedro Bell. Okay, the first one tip. Uh, some other. I would write it down. 1.7. Some more expectations. I would say uh, 0.6537. 6537. Okay. <laughs> Too precise. Okay. And some more. The third one. I think it will be something like 0 0.43. 0 0.43? Yeah. Uh, and it was colleague uh, Horak uh, Christian. Okay. So I will type it down and now we will start competition by computation. Uh, okay. Uh, it's only a pity uh, that no ladies uh, were offering uh, 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 their proposals. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, we would go to sharing. Uh, and uh, uh, here we have uh, our data file, prices, sizes. Uh, so uh, we would compute uh, correlation coefficient. So we would go into regression and once again, part classical and the first dialogue is for correlation. So uh, once again, if you are familiar uh, with SPSS environment, uh, so uh, you know that there are two dialogues in SPSS for correlations third or bivariate correlations, and then uh, partial correlations. In JEST, and I guess uh, this is uh, quite a uh, uh, <coughs> good option, there is only one dialogue, which is for bivariate correlations, and also for partial, as you can, condition on other variables. So I would only uh, change the description. So correlation for prices and sizes, I would uh, type down. So here it is, and uh, we can start uh, to take prices and sizes, and uh, let's go into uh, variables. And if you read first inside intro results, so Pearson's correlation coefficient is 0 0.649, and if I go back into our uh, competition, 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.65, and uh, 0.43. So currently, uh, Ladja Haverland is the winner of our competition. He is very, very close uh, to this value. Okay, so that's the first uh, de evaluation of our result. But before we start uh, to celebrate our uh, winner uh, of this competition, I would show you some tricks uh, and uh, we would also uh, prepare the chart for our data. First trick, uh, which is quite nice here, is uh, that you can uh, change uh, the appearance of this table, which is showing Pearson R and P value. If you like uh, uh, to see sample size, you can click here for sample size. So now the table is nearly the same as uh, for SPSS environment. And if you click here for additional options for the first option, display profiles, the table is maybe uh, even uh, better. Uh, it is uh, designed as the first uh, row uh, with N, Pearson R, and P value. So, uh, first of all, before we start uh, to comment and interpret results, I would ask for plots. So, if you like to describe relationship uh, for carbon variables, it is usually good uh, to use a scatter plot. And uh, I would ask for all these uh, options, so densities, statistics, and also for confidence interval. So it will take some time to just, uh, uh, sometimes it can crash also, um, but I hope that now uh, it would be okay. And in a few seconds, I guess uh, we can see graphical results uh, for our data. So of course it depends on your computer, but here it is. And here we have some graphical results uh, for my data. So uh, only, uh, and it's not very nice uh, uh, from JASP uh, that automatically uh, the variables are listed uh, uh, as uh, they are in the uh, data file. So on the X uh, uh, 
x-axis we can see price and on the y-axis we can see size maybe i would like to reverse it so i can take price from here and now i can add uh, and size and price uh, is better as usually we expect that the relationship is uh, that prices are following sizes, not sizes are following prices. So now uh, I've only recomputed the picture. And here you can see distribution of variable size, variable price. So these are these pictures. Here we have correlation coefficient itself. And here we have relationship between sizes and prices and also some line which is trying to describe our my data. But you can also see here at least some strange point. And I guess that we know what is this strange point about. We know this is very, very big flat, but the price of this flat is not so big, approximately 3 million for 400 and nearly uh, 40 square meters more. And as you can see, the points are quite following some line but this point is quite disturbing this line. We will discuss about uh, this phenomenon as influential in regression analysis uh, uh, in the next lecture. But currently, we can also expect that if we are computing correlation coefficient for this data, including this point, this value 0 0.649 uh, is maybe somehow biased. It means that real correlation is maybe bigger if we would exclude this data point. So that's why uh, we would learn how uh, to ask JASP for exclusion of some special values uh, in my data file. Of course, we can define some values as missing data, uh, but uh, that's not uh, good uh, uh, for this occasion, as we would like only to exclude the flat for which size is more than 400 square meters. And for this option, we can use this uh, uh, symbol on the left upper corner of data matrix, which is a symbol for filtering data. So if you click into the filter, you would see the dialog, which is nearly the same as dialog for computation. And here it is possible to write some logical condition. So I will type size is more than 400 square meters, uh, excuse me, less than, uh, as we need to pass uh, this condition, so double clicking here. So size is less than 200 square meters. Apply pass-through filter, you must click on, and then CHESP should exclude uh, your data that do not fulfill uh, the condition. So, if just will once again respond to my command, we can wait for a minute, uh, then uh, this condition should be uh, applied and just automatically recompute our results. So now you can see uh, that the data has 270 rows and only 262 pass through filter. So also these blank rows at the end uh, are not currently uh, included in my uh, data computation. And we can go back to our correlation procedure and uh, we can see that our correlation is slightly increased. 0 0.685. If we go back uh, into our previous uh, uh, competition, so now maybe uh, there are two winners, not only one. Uh, and you can see in uh, graphics that uh, now the data seems much better. There is no special uh, influential point and regression line is going directly through these points. So that's a basic uh, introduction into correlation in JASP uh, by graphics and also by figures. And now we will briefly interpret results. I would only ask uh, one more option and ask for confidence intervals for correlation. So now uh, our results are slightly uh, more uh, <coughs> detailed. So here we have 
We are computing currently for 262 flights. Pearson correlation is 0 0.685. Once again, we should go back into recommendation of Cohen and then Cohen's recommendation uh, to uh, correlation coefficient was flowing. Approximately 0 0.1 and close values, nearly no relationship at all. Uh, he called it as small relationship. 0 0.3 and close values as medium relationship and 0 0.5 and more as a big relationship. So here we can say that our relationship is not very weak it is quite strong relationship as we expected. And it is also positive. It means higher uh, uh, the size of the flat, the higher is also price of the flat. So this is the description of my data, Pearson's correlation and its interpretation. Here we have also confidence interval. So it means expectation of value of the correlation coefficient. So it can be as low as 0.6, and it can be also as high as 0.75 if I slightly round up. So this is 95% confidence interval. Only I would like to recap that confidence interval cannot be directly computed in SPSS uh, up to the version 26. In version 27, it is a, a newly uh, included procedure. And here we have p-value. And last one question uh, to all of you is, if somebody can help me uh, uh, to uh, remind what is the meaning of p-value uh, in correlation analysis and what would be conclusion from p-value here uh, for this task uh, if we are correlating sizes and prices of the flats. P-value is significance, <laughs> sorry. And uh, what does it mean, substantive? I substantive or statistical? <laughs> uh, what, is, uh, what are hypotheses behind this test? What is null and alternative hypothesis? Uh, usually, if lower than 0 0.05, there is a difference. Um, but this is not about differences, this is about relationships. Uh -huh. So what is null and what is alternative hypothesis here for this test? Can somebody help us? That there is a relationship and there, then uh, that there isn't. And what is null and what is alternative? Přijímám nulovou hypotézu. So the zero should be that there is a relationship and the alternative that there isn't. Or did I switch to? Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one simple tool for Czech as well as for English. I will say it uh, also in Czech in a few minutes. Uh, for English, if it is zero or null hypothesis, so zero or null means there is zero or null difference, zero or null relationship. So there is no difference, no relationship. So that's the basic meaning of this expression, null hypothesis. An alternative is just opposite. Uh, for Czech, uh, so excuse me uh, for this uh, uh, brief uh, exclusive of Czech language, nulová hypotéza je rozdíl nula, anebo je souvislost nula. Zmá rozdíl nebo souvislost není, to je ta nulová. A alternativa něco tam asi je. So uh, this is the explanation and I hope uh, the, you will be able uh, to remember it uh, up to the end of your times. Uh, so uh, currently here, null hypothesis would say, Prices and sizes are not related at all. Alternative, there is some relationship. I would say that here in this case, if I can see such a big correlation, there is maybe no need for testing. You can also see that confidence interval is very, very far from zero. But uh, as it is a quite classical strategy for the evaluation of results, uh, so we have computed p-value and you can see it is very, very small one, zero point then many, many zeros, 36 zeros, and 37 uh, decimal place starts with one, 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 two. So it is very, very small value, and if you were using uh, classical values such as 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 or other uh, classical values, for all these levels, you would reject null hypothesis. So you would say, okay, it seems probable 
that sizes and prices are somehow related. Not somehow, they are very, very closely related. So maybe this test is nearly useless. But we will discuss about statistical testing uh, at the beginning of the next classroom. Okay, so uh, we are at the end of recap. Uh, we are also uh, uh, at the